Hey friends, it's Riskit, and in today's video, I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of the latest track that I uploaded on the channel. I had a few people reach out and say that they wouldn't mind seeing a bit more of a behind the scenes look at it and how it was all put together. Um, so yeah, I thought that we'd tackle that today. So to do all of this, we have the Zoya, which is handling um, some mixing. We'll probably go over that last because it's at the end of the chain. We've also got the AE modular, which is just playing the lead synth line and running all of that into the deluge um, to sequence all of the special drum effects and everything else that uh, this thing can't do on its own. I'm not gonna play the whole track in its entirety. Uh, if you wanna do that, just jump back and watch the previous video. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Also, you've probably noticed this is the deluge with the new OLED screen, but we're not really going to be doing a deep dive into that. I'll probably save that for the workflow series that's coming up. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far this screen has been really awesome to use. I didn't know how much I would like it, and I like it a lot more than I thought I would. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute some of the tracks here. And basically what I want to point out is I have these two green tracks here. So these are MIDI tracks, and they're sending MIDI to the AE modular over here. So if we activate one of these, we have a blank audio track that's just left at the top. This can be activated or not activated. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's monitoring the incoming audio. So the audio is coming out of here and running into the line in on the deluge. So if we hit play, this is what we're getting. Now this row down here actually gets to the end and then ping pongs back to the front. So this just helps add in a little bit of extra variation. If we go to the second track, which is during the um, chorus. So yeah, this second part sounds like this. It's quite a short phrase. But we can hear as it plays through, it's got some sonic variation. Um, each, each bar sounds slightly different to the other, and that's because of the way that it is wired up on here. So a couple of quick things to point out about this patch is um, obviously the AE modular is an analog system. So that means that um, the oscillator will fall in and out of tune um, after extended periods of time. So every time that I boot this track up, I mean, I do have another version saved with the audio embedded into it, but every time I boot this performance version up, I actually have to tune the oscillators so that they are in tune with the synth parts I have set up on the deluge. So exa for example, if I play it with the bass or this other lead synth, we can hear that it's already slightly fallen out of tune. So we just need to change our frequency until it sounds about right. So yeah, something like that. The rest of this patch is actually fairly simple. It's just running into a filter. Um, the key takeaway is that I have this um, attenuator down the bottom. Now, if I set these all the way back down, the idea was for this performance that I wanted to be able to sort of wiggle these knobs about and get a little bit of difference as it went, but I was already having so much trouble focusing on performing the song on the deluge, I kind of just left it all alone. So if we hit play, it doesn't sound too different. Um, if we turn this bottom knob up, we can hear that the resonance of our filter slightly creeps in. Just for like some more sparkly notes. This top one controls the decay up here. So it's using a sample and hold of our noise oscillator to change some random decay values. I mean, that's kind of the same as just grabbing this knob up here and controlling it ourselves. So yeah, that's pretty much all that patch is. It's quite basic. And then that's running into the line in of the Doge and sequencing with everything else.
Now, because that synth does sort of play around all over the place, there is another synth that's playing underneath it. And that's just to give it a bit more of a constant for your ears to latch onto. And it's very basic, it just sounds like this. So it's just a small arpeggiator. There's been some basic filtering done on this, but nothing too crazy. After that, we've got the bass, and this is just um, a simple bass sample that I've used in 100 Delius tracks before. Now, normally um, with my bass, I do like to add a bit of saturation, but I was finding the saturation on the Delius just made it a bit too gritty for this track. And it really took away some of the um, sort of richer bass tones. So I left it at zero and took care of adding in a little bit of saturation with the Zoya, um, which we'll go over a bit later in this video. Now, the rest of the main verse is fairly simple. We have our main drums. Cool. So we've got some uh, double kicks, some snares, basic hi-hat rhythm. And at the top here, um, our little clav clave is ping-ponging back and forth at like um, a slightly different length, um, just so that we can get a bit more randomness with it. And we have a clap sample up here, and that's being triggered um, in a ping-pong direction. So it just adds a little bit of groove. Worth noting too that there is a little bit of swing on this track. Next up we have this drum sample, um, which just sounds like this. There's a little bit of filter, a little bit of reverb, um, maybe even a small amount of delay. And then if we throw that in with our drums, it just brings our original drums to life. So here's our original drums. And here's it with the other rhythm. Um, you might have also heard that in this drum track we have a couple of toms. These just play on the last bar of four bars. So, so far all together this sounds like this. Now obviously there's not enough side chain happening there um, and because we have a bunch of double kicks in our um, in our drum track. I didn't want to use that as the side chaining track. So there is a separate track up here, which is just doing a simple four to the floor side chain. And now we can get that pumping effect. Last but not least, we have a build and riser track. So we're going to zoom all the way out here. Um, this is essentially an eight bar loop. So we have a crash at the start and then a reverse symbol at the end. Now this is really useful because when we're zoomed out like this, we can see when that crash is happening and when the reverse symbol is going to happen next. And that's usually a good way for me to know that it's time to change something. This is going to lead into the next phrase of music that I want the audience to be listening to. So if we activate this, we'll see it run through and you'll see that our little MIDI track ping pongs back and forth. So it plays forward up until this point. And then while we're waiting for this to come in, I can hear that it's playing backwards, which is another good indicator that I've got to get ready to change up the song in some way. Now, usually at that moment, this is when I'll activate 
these three tracks down here. So these are duplicates of the tracks above them. We have a duplicate of the A modular track. So as soon as I activate that, it turns off this one. We have a duplicate of our bass track, which will turn off the original bass. And we've got a new track down here, which is like um, a, a bunch of chords in a pad-like sound. But um, the reason that these sections have kind of set up like this is because I know that all of my drums and uh, like reverse cymbals and whatnot, they're all in this yellow section. So it's easy for me to pick out. So while I'm playing, I've got my basic verse and then I can just tap these three buttons and transition into the next part. And nothing's going to sound out of tune or fall out of time. Everything's gonna be playing nicely together. So if we play this section. Now, if I want to go back, I'll hit these two. However, this chord keeps playing. Sounds great at the start, but then I don't really think it fits after that. So whenever I transition back into the verse, I let that first chord play out, uh, which is just this one. And then I turn off the track using the shift function, just so that we're hearing it right at the start of transitioning back into the verse. Um, but then it vanishes until we need it to play again in the chorus. Uh, if we solo that track out, it just sounds like this. So that's just one of the presets on the Doge, but of course I've filtered it and added a bunch of reverb and whatnot in different sorts of ways just to kind of make it fit the song a little bit better. But aside from that, that is essentially the whole song constructed on the deluge. Now, while I'm performing, of course, I'm doing things like bringing in the drums um, with like shift functions and whatnot. Sorry, I'll just unsolo that. Um, so for example, if we have um, this playing, we can bring in the drums a little bit early by holding shift. And it's just a nice way to sort of add a bit more sort of um, like pre-build up to different sections of the song. And then the only other thing that I really did was just add on a low pass filter for the intro. So that's enough about the Doge. We've talked about the AA modular. Let's go over what's happening on the Zoya. Now it's nothing too complex. There is a tiny, tiny little bit of post-processing done in Ableton as well. Um, but essentially the Zoya for this patch, I decided to try and build like a a kind of similar mixing chain to what I build in Ableton. So we've got our audio input. You might notice that the deluge is turned up all the way as well. And that's purely because I've got the level of everything else turned down with effect entire. Um, and we can see that on the Zoya, if we press our input, nothing's clipping, which is exactly what we want. This input then runs into a compressor. Um, so we can see that audio coming in and then it's coming out of the compressor um, quite sort of evened out and quiet as well, which means that we need to, of course, load it into a VCA. If we go to the end of our VCA, um, you can see that it's increased the volume a little bit. So everything that you've been hearing up until this point is playing in mono, and that's because I need to use my microphone when it's plugged into my audio interface, and I've only got the two inputs. Um, so yeah, you can see that this is a stereo patch. We have left and right inputs and left and right outputs. Um, the left and right output of the VCA after being compressed is now moving into an OD and distortion effect. Um, so it's just adding a little bit of overdrive. And finally, that is running into a tone control. So think of this as like a little bit of an EQ. Um, we can control like the low shelf and whatnot. There's not really much going on here. It's kind of just to boost the bass and the treble just a little bit. And then that just runs into our tone control. 
Um, this little white dot is nothing. I was just uh, dicking around. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically, um, this is it with it on. You might not hear too much difference. And let's see it off. So in my ears, it's kind of just tied things together um, a little bit nicer. I think what I might do in the future is um, wire it up a little bit different and have this uh, distortion effect only applied to bass notes so that I can add a bit of saturation to the bass that way. But the main reason I did this is because I've been mixing all of these things in Ableton for so long and I really wanted to see if I could set up like a mixing box using this Zoya. So it's kind of a bit of a work in progress at the moment, but for the most part, um, yeah, that's how I've been using it. Anyways, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about this patch today. So now I can finally unplug it. Um, hit me up if you have any more questions about the setup and thanks for watching. Hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.